the prevention, detection, and treatment of diseases affecting the circulatory and respiratory systems. After going through this lesson, you are expected to identify the different circulatory and respiratory related diseases, describe the effects of these diseases to human's body, and recognize the importance of having a healthy lifestyle. The following are some of the circulatory system related diseases. High blood pressure. Blood pressure is the measurement of how much force is used to pump blood through your arteries. If you have high blood pressure, also called hypertension, it means the force is higher than it should be. High blood pressure can damage your heart and lead to heart disease, stroke, or kidney disease. There are no symptoms with high blood pressure, which is why it's often called the silent killer. Atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease. Atherosclerosis, also known as hardening of the arteries, occurs when plaque builds up on the walls of your arteries and eventually blocks blood flow. Plaque is made of cholesterol, fat, and calcium. Coronary artery disease indicates that the plaque buildup in your arteries has caused the arteries to narrow and harden. Blood clots can further block the arteries. Coronary artery disease develops over time. You can have it but not be aware of any symptoms. Other times, it may cause chest pain or the sensation of heaviness in the chest. Heart attacks. A heart attack occurs when not enough blood reaches your heart. This can happen due to artery blockage. Heart attacks damage the heart muscle and are medical emergencies. Have someone else call if you have symptoms such as pain in the center or left side of the chest that feels like mild or severe discomfort, pressure, fullness, or squeezing. Pain that radiates from the jaw shoulder, arm, or across the back, shortness of breath, sweating, nausea, irregular heartbeat, unconsciousness. Women often experience heart attacks a little differently, with pressure or aching in their back and chest. Heart failure, sometimes called congestive heart failure. Heart failure occurs when the heart muscle is weakened or damaged. It can no longer pump the volume of blood needed through the body. Heart failure normally occurs when you've had other heart problems, such as a heart attack or coronary artery disease. Early symptoms of heart failure include fatigue, swelling in your ankles, and increased need to urinate at night. More severe symptoms include rapid breathing, chest pain, and fainting. Strokes Strokes often occur when a blood clot blocks an artery in the brain and reduces the blood supply. They also can happen when a blood vessel in the brain breaks open. Both events keep blood and oxygen from reaching the brain. As a result, parts of the brain are likely to be damaged. Abdominal Aortic Aneurysms An abdominal aortic aneurysm is a bulge in a weakened part of the aorta. The aorta is the largest blood vessel in your body. It carries blood from your heart to your abdomen, legs, and pelvis. If the aorta ruptures, it can cause a heavy bleeding that's life threatening. An abdominal aortic aneurysm can stay small and never cause problems, in which case your doctor may take a wait and watch approach. When it becomes larger, you may experience pain in the abdomen or back. Large and rapidly growing abdominal aortic aneurysms are at greater risk of rupturing. This requires immediate attention. Peripheral artery disease. Peripheral artery disease or PAD is atherosclerosis that occurs in the extremities, usually in your legs. It reduces blood flow to your legs as well as to your heart and brain. If you have PAD, you're at greater risk of developing other circulatory system diseases. Many people have no symptoms with PAD, but if you do, 
Symptoms may include pain or cramping in the legs, especially when walking, coolness in legs or feet, sores that do not heal on the feet or legs, redness or other changes in skin color. Tips for circulatory health. Maintain a healthy weight. Do not smoke. Exercise a minimum of 30 minutes a day, most days of the week. Maintain a healthy, low-fat, low-cholesterol diet with more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Avoid trans fats and saturated fats which are often found in processed foods and fast food. Limit salt and alcohol intake. Use relaxation and self-care to reduce stress. The following diseases are respiratory system related. Asthma. Asthma is defined as a common chronic respiratory condition that causes difficulty in breathing due to inflammation of the airways. Asthma symptoms include dry cough, wheezing, chest tightness and shortness of breath. Allergic reactions, infections, and pollution can all trigger an asthma attack. Usually, asthma starts in childhood years and progresses into adulthood. However, some people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s can get adult onset asthma. Asthma Respiratory pathways become irritated, bronchioles constrict. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease or COPD Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease is an umbrella term that encompasses several respiratory illnesses that cause breathlessness or the inability to exhale normally. People usually experience symptoms including shortness of breath and normally cup up sputum, especially in the morning. COPD can be tricky for some people to identify because symptoms are often mistaken for the gradual aging process and body deterioration. In fact, COPD can develop over the course of several years without any signs of shortness of breath. The disease usually begins while people are in their 30s or 40s and then peaks during their 50s, 60s, and 70s. Treatment includes smoking cessation, bronchodilator therapy, and pulmonary rehabilitation, which is a supervised exercise program for people with COPD. Unlike asthma, COPD is not reversed. Chronic bronchitis Chronic bronchitis is a form of COPD emphasized by a chronic cough. Usually, people cough up sputum, especially in the morning. Since chronic bronchitis is a form of COPD, it's treated the same way. People can also develop acute bronchitis, which is not a long-term disease but rather an infectious problem. It develops from a viral or bacterial infection and can be treated with antibiotics. Symptoms associated with acute bronchitis will subside once the infection has resolved. Bronchitis Respiratory pathways become infected, resulting in cough and mucus. Empysema Empysema is a serious respiratory disease, which is another form of COPD. The most common cause is smoking. Those who suffer from empysema have trouble exhaling air from their lungs. Cigarette smoke damages the air sacs in the lungs to a point where they can no longer repair themselves. Empysema evolves slowly over the years, and there is no cure. However, those who quit smoking are more likely to see the disease's progression slow. In empysema, alveoli break down. Lung cancer With the ability to develop in any part of the lungs, this cancer is difficult to detect. Most often, the cancer develops in the main part of the lungs near the air sacs. DNA mutations in the lungs cause irregular cells to multiply and create an uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells or a tumor. These tumors interfere with the irregular functions of the lungs. Symptoms can take years to appear but include things like chronic coughing, changes in voice, harsh breathing, sounds and coughing of blood. Lung cancer can lead to death 
shortness of breath, bronchitis or pneumonia, cystic fibrosis or bronchiectasis. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic respiratory disease caused by a defective gene that creates thick and sticky mucus that clogs up tubes and passageways. This mucus causes repeat and dangerous lung infections as well as obstructions in the pancreas that prevent important enzymes from breaking down nutrients for the body. Symptoms of cystic fibrosis include salty tasting skin, chronic coughing, frequent lung infections in a poor growth rate in children. Pneumonia Pneumonia is a common lung disease caused by an infection in the air sacs in the lungs. The infections can be bacterial, viral, or fungal. Most of people can recover in one to three weeks, but for certain people, pneumonia can be extremely serious and even life-threatening. Symptoms, which include cough, fever, shaking chills, and shortness of breath can range from mild to severe. Pneumonia, infection of the lungs, causes alveoli to collect mucus. Pleural effusion. Pleural effusion is a collection of fluid between the lung and the chest wall in what's called the pleural space. The fluid can collect for a variety of reasons, including pneumonia, cancer, or congestive heart failure. Usually patients notice symptoms of increasing chest discomfort and shortness of breath. COVID-19. The illnesses listed above have all withstood the test of time. COVID-19 is new, meaning we are still learning about it. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, COVID-19 is a respiratory illness that belongs to a large family of viruses called coronaviruses. This type of virus infects humans and animals. But this new strain has not been seen in humans before 2019. The virus seems to have originated in Wuhan, China. From what we can tell, the virus spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close contact with one another within about 6 feet. Like other viruses, COVID-19 spreads through droplets released when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. The primary symptoms are cough, shortness of breath, and fever. If you have these symptoms, please call ahead before visiting a healthcare facility. The following are tips to keep your lungs healthy. Do not smoke. Avoid exposure to indoor pollutants that can damage your lungs. Minimize exposure to outdoor air pollution and prevent infection.